this is uh, Flo. I'm a local guide and this is my first virtual tour for Place to Be Siena. Follow us on our, on, on our socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and follow us on uh, Siena Info and Tours. Uh, we hear the church bells here. Um, we are in a wonderful place, in a place of peace, silence. We are in the Abbey of Monte Oliveto Maggiore, south of Siena, in the heart of the Clay Hills. And this is a community of monks who live here. And this abbey was founded in the document, you find a first document in 13. 19 by Bernardo Tolomei, a rich man from the Tolomei family in Siena, so the link with Siena is very strong, who uh, abandoned all his richness and decided to dedicate his life to spiritual life. Came here in this area and uh, as a hermit. Uh, and founded the abbey and also the order of monks. These monks follow the Benedictine Olivetan order, uh, so follow the order, the rules and the book of Saint Benedict from Norcia. Saint Benedict who lived in the fifth century after Christ. So as we, we go back in history and this is one of my favorite places you will see. We are now here. This is a difficult time for the monks because they have lunch. They have their special rules, but they will let us in the magnificent cloister inside uh, for a short time just to have a little peek and then uh, it would be nice and then we can continue and do more. Uh, Echo, these are the monks. We can uh, discover more uh, on site, in person. So um, now, before we start, we can see a beautiful scene of the, uh, of the um, uh, beautiful view from above uh, of the abbey so that we can see a bit more of the magnificent clay hills surrounding this place. So this is the magnificent view of the Crete Senesi, the clay hills. As you can see, we, we see a little bit of the entrance, of the fortified entrance of the uh, monastery, of the abbey, and all the cypresses surrounding the abbey. So, uh, the cypress tree is an iconic tree uh, for Tuscany, but we have to um, say that the cypress also, was also very functional because the roots are very strong and go deep below the, the, the land, so they can actually, let's say, stop the erosion because as you can see, the abbey is surrounded on both sides by these uh, clay hills, what we call geologically Kalanki, uh, that are typical of this area because this area in the Pliocene was below the sea level. So uh, two to five million years ago, all this land was below the sea level. And today we find it, we find it full of clay. And this is what gives to this landscape, this look, as, which is compared to the moon. It looks like we are on the moon. And up on the hill, just on the top, there is one of the, one of my favorite uh, small um, medieval towns, hamlets, called Chiusure, just on top of the hill, it's a, a not the beaten path place that you can find in this area. 
and the views from up there are spectacular, are, I would say, world unique. The Clay Hills area is located, say, south, southeast of Siena, and it borders the Val d'Orcia, which is the uh, Val d'Orcia is a little more famous because it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, but uh, the beauty of the Clay Hills and the Val d'Orcia is, I would say, unique in the world. So let's go back down towards the Abbey. Echo. We are looking at the entrance here, uh, the fortification, because we have to say that you needed a place to, uh, of defense for the abbey, for the monks who lived, worked, and uh, in the monastery, in the abbey. Echo. So let's go back down. We are seeing from above, we are looking at the Cloister, cloister in the middle here, where we will find magnificent frescoes from the 1400s, end of the 1400s, beginning of the 1500s. So let's go and uh, back to the abbey so that we can continue this short virtual tour. So follow me and I will bring you to see the wonderful Monte Oliveto Abbey. This is a place of nature, this is a place of peace and silence, where silence is not the absence of sound, but it's a way to listen and be closer to a spiritual life. Uh, this is a living community of monks, monks who follow the Benedictine rule. What is the Benedictine rule? It's the rule of ora et labora, pray and work. So normally we would walk through the museum, but they are opening this place for us. They're keeping it open for us. So we're passing through the church. redone in the 1700s and as you can see ora et labora this place um, this is a wonderful choir that we will see inlaid wood choir that is a really great masterpiece and now the lights are not on but we will have the opportunity to see it if you come on tour with us and permesso scusi 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 prego follow us generally the monks. Grazie. They are granting us and the other people the opportunity to come in here in this very special moment for them. Uh, and uh, this is the heart of the abbey. Uh, this is the cloister where we find frescoes from the end of the 1400s, beginning of the 1500s. Two great artists, not really so internationally known, perhaps. Perhaps you haven't heard of Signorelli, but Signorelli from Cortona was one of Michelangelo's favorite artists. And Sodoma was an artist, was coming from Piemonte, worked in this area quite a lot. And look at this Christ, look at the uh, artistic 
feeling you find here. In this place, we can find uh, the life of Benedict. Why? Because the abbot commissioned these frescoes, called these artists, Signorelli first, but Signorelli didn't really finish the work. Signorelli did a few of these frescoes, and then 1505 came Sodoma. This is a work of Sodoma, and this represents the life of Saint Benedict from the city of Norcia. That's his hometown. But we can say that Sodoma was a very eccentric person, and this is when Benedict leaves his home. This is his sister, Santa Scolastica. She became, um, she created schooling for nuns, and Benedict leaves his hometown, Norcia, to go to Rome. This is a view of Rome. This is Castel Sant'Angelo, if you travel to Rome, it's a very uh, beautiful place. Consider this was done in 1505, so uh, the, artist, the artist sketched an image of Castel Sant'Angelo, so it's like a, a photograph of Castel Sant'Angelo at the beginning of the 1500s. And let me show you uh, quite an iconic image of the artist. This is Sodoma. This is a self-portrait of the art. So in the middle of the story, he put himself with this very precious mantle and with badgers. He loved these kind of animals and we can find a lot of these quite eccentric animals. And a little, and there's, there is a, some story uh, behind these paintings because uh, Sodoma was not always in good terms with the abbot commissioner, so sometimes he decided to uh, make some uh, mistakes on purpose because you don't pay me enough, you don't pay me on time, and I make mistakes. I do what I want. I'm an artist. And if you would like, if you wish to discover a bit more of the stories behind these frescoes and what I always like to say is that um, this is art in its own context because these paintings from the end of the 1400s, in this case beginning of the 1500s, were commissioned specifically for this cloister so that the monks still today can walk through and see, read through the images, the story of the life of Benedict. So I hope you can uh, visit us and this is a place that it's a little bit off the beaten path. Uh, in, you have seen in the wonderful clay hills uh, south of Siena and so we look forward to meeting you and having you here with us. Uh, I have to thank place to be for this space and this opportunity and you can keep following us on our socials and on Siena Info and Tour Tours page. Ciao!